Oh, wow. Hello, folks. Welcome back for I Am The One, The Only, Hobo Tom. Wow. What a shitty day it was. Yeah. Whatever. It's done. It's over with. I'm here to talk to you, the YouTube universe, about some professional wrestling. Mainly that of SmackDown. Wow. It was actually really good. Not a lot of wrestling. Not a lot of promos, though, either. Good matches. Long matches. Some twists. Some turns. It was some good stuff tonight. In fact, I haven't done this in a while. But one match. Was a filet mignon match. Wow. When was the last time I could say that? But first of all, I need to give, well, at least one shout out and we'll see what happens um shokan you sir he said yes to something it was right for what i posted i'll take credit for that yes you sir have earned that six count And no low king. There's no shout out for you. So you know what? You've posted enough. You've earned your place in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. So probably after this show, or at latest tomorrow after AEW. Yeah, or maybe tomorrow morning. I don't know, sometime. I only need like an hour or so. You sir. Are getting your own character in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. Yep, that's that's what happens, folks. You shout out to me, a member of Discord. Be like, show Khan, and you get your little video shout out. Or you're like, Nolo King, you're pretty consistent about stuff. You become a character in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League and join the ranks of Bum Slicks. Oh, who else? Sunny Bimbo, Mojo. I know there's a few others there. Dan Blaze, 
There's actually a bunch of them now that I think about it. I'd have to go back and take a look at the roster, but I I know that's at least oh, well Fettuccini. So that's five that I can think of off the top of my head. That's actually probably pretty good for a Friday night. I'm tired and I just really want to go to bed after I make a piece of crust for tomorrow. So tomorrow's AEW. That's that should be in, that should be fun. And I have to make that card tomorrow morning ish. Or should I make that card tonight? After this. I don't know. I'll figure something out. It starts off the show. Wow. This is good. Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman cuts a promo. He has the line that is in this show's title. He says, And you, Carmella's latest boyfriend. Oh, he just did not say that because we all know that's referencing Corey Graves. I wish it was me, though. I give myself a 2% botch with that, though. Um, Roman Reigns even speaks, too. Very like a Paul Heyman guy. Normally, Paul Heyman does all the talking. Paul, um, Roman Reigns helps in and adds his own promo. Good stuff. In our first match of the night, we have Heavy Machinery versus Miz and Morrison. Pretty good stuff. Um... Yep, Heavy Machinery, they just take t- to both Miz and Morrison, the Devil Teams. I'll tell you what, as a tag team, they are so fun to watch. They have so much good energy. They're positive. They're always moving, even the two really big 300-pound-plus guys. Again, I can't say enough about that during the break. Um, Morrison, again, tries to make his comeback. I'll tell you what, John Johnny Mundo can eat a big body drop. Big back body drop. That was good. And the double splash. Then Otis. Miz. Miz might be taking a break soon because I think Maurice has two kids now, maybe. I don't know. I know there's two, though. So he might want to take a break, be a dad for a little bit. Otis hits the Caterpillar on the Miz. Short match. That's my only real takeaway from it. Um, again, I always get upset when they don't let when they don't let John Morrison be Johnny Mundo. That's always my knock on it. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And then Morrison just steals. The money in, in the bank briefcase. We'll see that come into play later. Uh, in the backstage, Big E. Again, he has a birthday cake because Xavier Woods, the X-Man, is supposed to be here tonight. Uh, he has to keep Lucha House Party. Remember, Lucha House Party, they like to party. So, again, they're always in for a good birthday party. Um, he takes the, the cake to the garage area, though. It's confusing where he gets jumped by Sheamus. Oh, wow. Sheamus cuts a quick interview. Yeah, Big E's all about the fun and the ha I am the, the Belfast brawler. I'm here to fight. Fight, fighters. Ready, fight. And then we have, oh, wow. This was actually a good match. This makes me regret not seeing payback. Because this match... I don't care what payback was like. This match was darn good. And the ending of it. We're not worthy. Bruce Pritchard. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. But it was Sasha Banks and Bailey taking on Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. My notes I wrote down. Unfortunately, Nia Banks. My mistake. This is, I'll tell you what. This is the best Nia Jax. <laughs> this has been the best Nia Jax match I've ever seen. Um, Sasha and Bailey, they jump the champs. However, they get flung in t- as they go to the outside. Shannon Baszler and Nia Jax just kind of whap, whaps them into the barricade. The protective barricade, by the way, just for fun. I mean, that just looked god off. That just looked bad. Like, not. Bad in a good way, where they just like picked him up, whap, swung him in, whap, whap. That was pretty good. Uh, 
They they get an A for effort there on Nia, Nia Jax. Hit a shoulder break, breaker. Wow. They did play up the power of Nia Jax. So that was really good. <sighs> My only detraction in this match, and this is such probably a petty thing coming from a long-standing wrestling fan, because remember I have been watching wrestling since the early 80s. I want to say the first match I saw. 81, 82. 80, 80, 81, 82, sometime around then. That goes back, I think, to Colonel De Beers and Skandar Akbar. Again, a friend and I were discussing like best promos ever. Um, I'll, I'll get into that after this match, though. I'm getting sidetracked. But so with this match, pizza going. Um, again, Nia Jax puts in the million dollar dream. The million dollar dream is just being used as a wrestle now. Not the way it should be. I mean, that should be a finisher. That used to be a finisher. It's a Kata Hajine. It's a Taz mission. That should be one of the most lethal wrestling moves in all of professional wrestling. The million dollar man used it. It was a million dollar dream. Put people to sleep with it. In jujitsu, it's, it's a Kata Hajime. A little different. You use the gi. Instead, I think you put the their arm against their neck in like the half Nelson. Pull their gi, use their gi across the neck, wrap it up tight, and you choke someone out like that. A little bit different application, but still, it's, 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 it's for the most part, the, the, it looks nearly the same. Then, yeah, that's my only thing. Then we have the, there we go. Oh, did my mic start to die out? Uh-oh. Maybe I hit something funky. Maybe it slipped down. Maybe it's getting... Getting old. No, my microphone's dying. Wow, it really is dying. Maybe it's volume. I don't know. I'll figure something out. Again, hey, this was a free mic. I can't complain about that. But then, so I, so I upped the volume a little bit. Hopefully that sounds pretty good. If not, you in the YouTube universe let me know about stuff and I'll just... I don't know, hopefully for Christmas I got a snowball microphone. That'd be nice. And then, let's see here. Um, Shannon Baszler. There's a shoulder breaker onto Bailey. So in this, they're actually targeting different body parts on both wrestlers. When Bailey's in the ring, they're focusing on the shoulders, the upper bodies. Uh, Shannon's going after the, the shoulder breaker. Very typical, almost like um, uh, Pentagon Jr.'s arm breaker, except for instead of, yeah, it's almost like it. She just brings the whole thing back. She doesn't chicken wing the one leg. She just kind of, it's just it's like, almost like a stump, stump puller for, for the shoulder. Still looks nasty. Um, when when Sasha Banks gets in, so she hit the Shiny's Wizard on Shayna, and Shayna got stuck in the wrong corner for a little bit. But then Sasha took a nasty bump, nasty knee bump. Uh, she posted her knee, fell down. I always do get worried when Sasha Banks takes a floor bump. She's taken a few of them awkwardly in the past. This one wasn't too bad. This one, I this one actually looked pretty decent. Um, she's sell, selling the knee. Shayna Baszler, she goes after that knee. She's smart. Again, I like that. Um, goes after the knee, uh, tries a Muda lock. Old school wrestling moves. Love if you like the Muda lock will legitimately tear two of the four ligaments in the knee. It will definitely wreck the posterior cruciate, the anterior cruciate. Those get those get torn to all hell. The way the knee is built, those two ligaments are not made to take that kind of stress. Again, you put that on in any jiu-jitsu match, it's over. It's hard to win a jiu-jitsu match. It's a kind of hard setup. Pro wrestling match, you apply it wrong, you're tearing the knee, tearing the guy's knee apart. Especially if there's two grown men like like really trying to make it look real versus one guy saying, hey, watch it, look at this. Holy shit, that hurts. But yeah, I think mean, that's amazing. Um, Bailey ran in for the Bailey to Belly. 
but Sasha Banks is still the legal man. Um, Sasha Banks puts Shane into the bank statement. Nia Jax breaks that breaks that up. Um, I, I forget who ate the pin. I don't even care. It was like I want to say Nia Jax body slammed Bailey onto Sasha, and then just stayed on top. So you had Sa- small Sasha Banks with Bailey on top of her, with Nia Jax on top of her. So yeah, she wasn't going anywhere. Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax won. But that's not the key of the match. Then all of a sudden, Bailey's like, "Oh, my friend got hurt," and beats her, and beats her, and I'm like, "Kill, kill Bailey, kill!" Yes, yes, yes. Oh. The chair, break it, break the chair. So yeah, so Bailey turns, he, turns pure evil on Sasha Banks. Oh, Bailey, hey Bailey, ooh, ah, I wanna know, will you be my girl? That song's not gonna. That song might get sung again. Just because of what Bailey did. And if they ever have a live audience, WWE has to be very careful about that very smart response. That'll be interesting. That's like the, the old school what and like CM Punk chants. But uh, full heel Bailey. That's great. Um, and then Bailey goes out, gets the chair, teases to put on the knee of Sasha Banks. But no, Sasha kicks it off. So she puts the chair on the head and neck of poor Sasha Banks goes up. I forget if it was the second rope or top rope. Drops down on the chair. Oh, good. You know what? I can... <sighs> this is tough to say, but I can somewhat forgive the treatment of the million dollar dream just because of what Bailey did. This is a filet mignon match. Then we get back to ringside. We have Sammy Zayn come out. Oh, oh, wait, that's, no, that's, um, Zombie Nation. Oh, oh, yeah, I, I can't use Sammy Zayn's theme. Whenever I hear Sami Zayn's theme, I think of one thing, and that's Zombie Nation. Um, he comes out with his icy belt. Jeff Hardy comes out. He just beats up Jeff Hardy. AJ Styles is enjoying all of it. That's pretty cool to see. And then also at the back, we have the briefcase that Johnny Mundo think he stole. But <laughs> guess what? Otis is actually fairly smart. Otis pulled the old switcheroo. He put the contract into his little lunch pail, where it's in the big briefcase, that was his lunch. So when, of course, backstage, when Otis goes to open up, he has that pristine contract in hand, where Sean Morrison has a ham sandwich. <laughs> Actually, no, I won't even say that. That's gimmick infringement on my part. I gimmick infringe myself. So I'll say that was a bologna sandwich in... The briefcase that John Morrison got, so so he got swindled out of that. Again, cheaters never win. Then we have, bro, come out to the ring. He's the only way to get your proper entrance. You know, commercial. Um, you have the Firefly Funhouse. Well, that's gonna be a new character, the Firefly Funhouse. Then might be Sister Alexa. That'd be pretty cool to see. Then we have Baron. Baron Corbin come out as dice. He's like, hey, what are you doing here? Wait, put me down. So he gets put down on his dais. Uh, Matt Riddle really jumps him for the other two. Then we go to another commercial, br- another break. Um, then Alexa Bliss is backstage. Nikki Cross, I'm so sorry for breaking your mug. Let me give you a big hug. Nikki Cross very reluctantly and very like, whoa, what are you talking about there, lady, crazy lady? 
um, look that that looks like. Whoa. No, I'm good. But she accepted the hug from Alexa Bliss as the apology. We'll see what happens to poor Nikki Cross. Out there in the YouTube world, who is the better Sister Abigail? Alexa Bliss? Or Nikki Cross? Positive and negatives for both. We'll see what happens later. Um, then the rest of the, the people come out. Sheamus is in the ring. Jey Uso shows up. Ooh! So? Uh, this was actually a fun match. Kind of chaotic. Uh, Uso got rolled up in the beginning. I honestly thought Jey Uso was going to lose because normally the people in the ta in tag teams tend to lose. Um, Jimmy Uso, I think, is dealing with an injury. Oh, and... Newsflash. Um, a little bonus. Bonus segment here. The authors of pain have been released from their contract. That's not good. They were barely used. They were injured most of the time. Uh, some days I don't know what WWE is doing. They're just like releasing all the good people. I don't know. Hey, it is what it is. I'll, I'll, there's more important things to life to worry about. <laughs> I'm sure they'll land on their feet. If not, there's a local five guys that I'm sure could use their help. But, hey, what can you say? Um, from there, uh, Corbin has a decent spine buster. That's pretty good. Matt, Matt Riddle. And he has the um, double moves that he likes. Uh, Jey Uso got deep sixth by Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin actually had a head and arm suplex. That was pretty good. Again, harkens back to the days of Taz. Maybe there, maybe he's just saying, you know what? I, I've had this. I've used it before. Good time to use this. Again, I can't complain about that. Oh, no. That was by, by Matt Riddle. That was pretty good. Then he had a Broton bomb. The Broton. Not the St. Thomas. The Broton. Um... And a nice bridging German suplex. That was always good to see. Uh, Sheamus, again, powers back. Has what's-his-face in the cloverleaf. Again, it's nice to see Sheamus use that cloverleaf move. Uso, it's a super kick party! Single man super kick party. And then there was the, of course, spot fest, as there always has to be. Um... Matt Real the floats on bro. Jey Uso somehow won though. So it's gonna be cousin versus cousin. Samoan versus Samoan at Clash of Champions. I have no idea when that is. I have to look that up eventually on a calendar. But I'll tell you what, this it was a shock. I was surprised by it. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised by it. So you, you know what that means? This is gonna be a cheeseburger match. I'll tell you what, I was shocked. I think for the most part, Flay, cheeseburger equals surf and turf. Because of the, the meaningful promo, meaningful promos, which is always good to see. Um, the good matches, for the most part, good long matches, some meat to them. I'll give this a surf and turf raw. And a question out there, only because a friend of mine had a discussion about this. YouTube all YouTube people around the world, who are your top five or, or your Mount Rushmore of promos? My top four, and it can change almost. And I say top four, you could argue all day long about it. You have, to me, number one is the Macho Man Randy Savage. No one beats him. Ric Flair, you either wanted to punch him in the face or you want to be Ric Flair. Three, I'll tell you what, more, especially some of his interviews and his, his, off wrestling interviews, the Iron Sheik is really good. So he's three. 
and to me, Bobby Heenan's number four. I mean, I want to hear what you guys say, because then I think for me it would go Hulk Hogan, uh, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, because he could elicit such emotions. Uh, Jim Cornette, Skandar Akbar, and this was a really good promo. It's hard to say Arn Anderson because he was over always overshadowed by Ric Flair. Well, I can think of a tenth for it. Was a good... Oh, the Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock. They have to be there somewhere at 10 or 11. You could debate over beer for the next 20 years. I think all those 10 names pretty much deserve to be in the top 10, though. So uh, the rest of the schedule, I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no, wait, I'm not off tomorrow. Tomorrow's AEW. I think we have a couple friends over, so I might just be doing a review for that. Um, my sister, my, my hobo office that you see behind me, there is the wall of wrestling. It's not really set up to do both yet. And then my printer just died, so I have to figure shit out. Um... I'm gonna have a couple friends over to watch that. I'll take notes, probably do a review about it later tonight later that night. Sunday I'm off. Tranquilo. Uh, Monday is gonna be probably a double show. It's probably gonna still up in the air a little bit. You're definitely gonna have the Labor Day special. I do have to make both Nolo King and Uncle.